Well, here we are, week two of the series titled Falling in Love. No, just kidding. The series title is Be Mine. And yes, uh, we've been talking about love. And if you weren't here last week, we looked at the truth that God loves us and wants us to accept His love by entering into a relationship with Him. And so tonight, we're going to be talking about how we can take that love and love others. So let's jump right in with a question. By a show of hands, how many of you out there would say you're in love right now? Like, I'm in love with Jake Brown and, and I'm only in the sixth grade. Ah, oh, I think he's the one. I mean, you know you've had those thoughts before, right? Well, the word love is such a funny word and we use it like this. I love my iPhone or my clothes or my hair or maybe the series Scared Straight. I love my remote control car or my recliner or even my music. And I know many of us love Florida State Seminoles, right? Well, seriously, we love everything. Well, I have a story about love that I'd like to share with you. When I was in the eighth grade, I loved this hot girl named Alyssa Milano. Now, some of you may be too young in here to remember her. She plays Samantha in Who's the Boss? I mean, I loved her. I had pictures of her all over my walls. Um, I would even said I was gonna track her down and, and marry her one day. I would even blow her a kiss uh, to her poster every night before I went to bed. I mean, how many of you have done something like that? <laughs> yeah, you're a dork just like I was. <laughs> but you know what? I love Delissa Milano. And, and I know many of you in here can re relate to that. What do you love? Love, you know, I love my friends also. And you know, I love, I love, you know, certain things. Not, not things, but people. I love cookies and ice cream. I love my friends. I love weightlifting. I love basketball. Girls. <laughs> Tonight, we're not going to be talking about that kind of love. That kind of love is easy and usually based on emotion. That's the kind of love that drives us to go out and, and buy these stuffed animals or candy or jewelry. And with Valentine's Day just around the corner, we have to be careful. But the love I want to talk about tonight is the hard kind of love. It's the love that's not based on emotion, but on choice. It's on choosing to love others even when they are unlovable, even when they don't show you love in return. It's the, the love that, that's going to heal a relationship between you and, you and your parents. The love that will bring back the friends that, that hurt you, the ones that stabbed you in the back. It's the love that will help you forgive the person who violated you or lied to you or, or even stole from you. It's the love that's going to keep you from, from always arguing with your family and friends. It's the love that's going to allow you to forgive yourself for making that horrible decision. And finally, it's the love that brings you peace and hope and assurance that everything is going to be okay even when you don't feel like it is. Now, I know some of you are going to be pushing back and, and say, but I can't love like that. There's no way I can forgive my friends or forget what happened to me. There's no way I can stop arguing with my family. They're crazy. I mean, have you ever met my family? I mean, you're saying there's no way. I mean, you have no idea what it's like to be a teenager right now. It's too hard. I can't love like that. Well, you know what? You're right, you can't, at least not on your own. To love like this takes a bigger power than you and I possess. So right now, let's look at what scripture has to say about all this lo crazy love talk. In 1 John 4, 16, listen to what John says, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God is in him. Wow, did you get that? The ability to love is found in God because God is love. In other words, the ability to love those who are hard to love is, is found in God. The ability to love others, even when we don't feel like uh, we want to, is found in God. The ability to love is found in God because God is love. Let me show you what I mean by that. What I have here is a lamp. Now, we all know that, that lamps produce light in order for us to see, to do our homework or to read a book or to write these long passages in our diaries about the boy of our dreams. <laughs> no, no, really. A lamp is used for us to see in dark places, to provide light. But a lamp doesn't do us any good if it isn't plugged in, if it's not connected to a source of power. Look at it like this. We are this lamp and God is the power cord. If we want to shine our light and show our love to others, we must be connected to the source of love, and that is God Himself. Remember what Scripture said? God is love. If we live our lives connected to God, we will love the way God loves. Without Him, 
we'll fail to love others every single time. We cannot do it disconnected from Him. So what we must do is we must be plugged in to the source of power for all our love, and that is God. You know what? That was a great illustration. But the problem is, so many of us live our lives disconnected from God. Yeah, we come to switch every week, or maybe we pray a couple times a week, uh, you know, and we ask God, God, please help me pass this test, or, or God, please let her say yes when I ask her out. But for so many of us, connecting with God is not really high on our priority list, and therefore we come up with all kinds of excuses, like, it's just so hard, or, or I don't know how, or I'm afraid of all the silence. And, and for some of us, maybe we don't really realize how important it is in our walk with Christ. Maybe we don't connect with God because all of it is, is just so hard to understand. And then you go on to say things like, okay, so this guy Jesus lives a perfect life, dies on a cross for other people, and then rises from the dead. Oh, and there are these angels and demons in the story too. And because it is so foreign to our thinking and understanding, we can't wrap our minds around it. We doubt it or we dismiss it altogether. And because we don't take the time to connect with God, all of our relationships suffer. We are all at the point that, that loving others is, is not even important. Then we fall into peer pressure. We often feel that, that we have no self-confidence and we can't seem to overcome the sin that's in our lives. Then we think, since we don't connect with God, we're not the teenagers He's called us to be. So for many of us, like that lamp, may, maybe we look pretty on the outside or, and it fills an empty spot somewhere, but we're not living out the real purpose. Students, the ability to love is found in God because God is love. When we realize the importance of connecting ourselves to the power source of, our, of love, that is when we begin to live out our true purpose, to love God and to love others. Now, I'm sure some of you are pushing back real hard right now and thinking, but why should I? Why should I show love to others, especially when they're not even nice, let alone show love to me? Well, that's a valid question, and here's a valid answer. We love because God first loved us. 1 John 4, 10 and 11 tells us this. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Since God loved us enough to die for us, don't you think the only thing that makes sense is that we love those around us? Notice the words in the scripture and what they say. We ought to love each other. God doesn't say we have to or He's not even going to force us to. He lets us choose. He gives us a choice. So tonight, what will your choice be?